I've always wanted to talk about having cancer just because this, people think cancer looks like something else and this is a face of, this is a face of cancer. All right, Kim. Kim, you, uh, you've uh, been fighting with breast cancer for how long now? Four. So the first time around, it was I was free for 14 years clean of breast cancer. So I got the first diagnosis 14 years ago, and I supposedly beat it. Then I got a recurrence in July of last year. So this is my second battle with cancer. Mm. And how old are you now? I am 49 years old. I'll be 50 in great, December. You look great. For Thank 49. you. Thank you. You uh, you beat it the first time. Yes. You went through chemo and I did. I went through chemo. I went through surgery. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mark. And I also went through radiation um, the entire time of that journey. Yes. How long did you go through that? So that I, I want to say I was diagnosed April 1st. It was like April Fool's for me, April 1st of 2010. So I pretty much went through chemo right away, then radiation surgery. So I would say it took probably about 12, 13, 14 months to be done with everything. And the, was the is the fear of it coming back? Was was that something you just? It was not. It was not. So me, you not felt no, like you beat it. I, absolutely, I know, knew nothing about cancer. No one in my family really had it. I mean, I have a grandmother that passed from it, but it's not a genetic thing for me because I did the BRCA testing, and it just shows that it's a mutated gene. So I had no fear about it coming back. I just lived my life, and also too, I was on hormone medicine for ten years after surgery radiation. So I figured I just did everything that I needed to do. So I just lived my life like normal. Hmm. Mm -hmm. and the hormone treatment that you got after that, yeah. how did that affect you? Actually, it was fine. I didn't have any bad things. I got like hot flashes, which is one of the side effects. Some people do horrible on this drug, which is called tamoxifen, but it didn't bother me at all. Just, you know, minor side effects, but nothing major. But I did my full 10 years that I was supposed to want it. And after afterwards, I celebrated to say, hey, you know, I'm done. I'm free. So let's live live your life. Live your life. Uh -huh. what, what do you do for a living? I am in IT. So I'm a development project manager at an IT company. In uh, Milwaukee? Yeah. Well, Wisconsin. It's all over. I work from home, though. So oh, I see. But it's, yeah. it's based. The headquarters is in Florida. But oh, oh, we do have offices in Milwaukee. And uh, so just recently, you got a... You get some bad news. I did. I did. So in July of last year, I got news of a recurrence. And, you know, first time around with breast cancer, I found the lump myself. Um, second time around, it's one of those things. I had a mastectomy the first time around. So um, both breasts were removed. So I had implants. So back last year, I want to say January. So I noticed there was a, a like a knot or a bubble which I thought it was just on my implant since I wasn't scared that cancer would come back. So I raised my hand and say, hey, you know, there's something going on with my implant. They took me in for an MRI and they pretty much said, oh, you know, it's only a benign cyst. It's not cancer, it's a benign cyst, but I need to get it out. This is what the surgeon said. He needed to get it out because he didn't want it to get infected. So there was no rush to get it out. They scheduled me for a surgery in June of last year. They did pathology because that's what they do when they remove knots or anything. And they called me on July 24th with bad news just to say, you know, I'm sorry. You know, we're shocked just as well as you are. This is breast cancer again. again. Mm -hmm. And you, you had surgery again? I did. I had surgery again. So the first time around, my tumor was on my right breast. But on the left breast, there was su suspicious calcification. So they said, hey, you know, this is going to turn a cancer on the left. So let's just take both breasts. So this time the actual tumor, instead of calcification, the tumor was on the left. So I had surgery to remove that tumor and also to just to go in there and just try to get clear margins once again. So now you're you're in the clear, hopefully. You know, I, Mark, that's the thing. Like I always consider myself a breast cancer survivor, but I consider myself a breast cancer fighter now. I don't, I don't say survivor anymore. You know, I'm done with chemo, but I'm still doing immunotherapy, which is a targeted treatment towards, you know, for the cancer. And I'll be doing that up until September of this year. And then I'll be on another, a different hormone med. So I, I don't know, like I'm, I'm strong and I'm just trying to make sense of all of this, but I don't consider myself a survivor. And I don't say that to sound sad. I just feel as though I don't know if it's going to come back. 
it came back a second time. So will it come back a third time or fourth time? Will I, will I survive it? Will I live or will I pass from this? And I don't want to, I don't want to sound negative because I'm very positive about this whole thing, but you know, there's still a fear. There's a fear now this time around. How, how has this experience over the last 10, 14 years, has, how has it changed you? You know, I can say one thing for me. I I don't really take mess from people. Like I've always been, you know, pretty introverted, selectively extroverted, but I just don't, I don't really care about a lot of things. I don't let a lot of things bother me. I don't let uh, people bother me that may have bothered me in the past. I'm no drama, all about peace. But in terms of your appreciation for life and and health and just having your your family and oh absolutely you, you, you have children I do I have two sons I have a 15 year old and a 28 year old and you know I I stay strong because of them you know my mom who you met you know in the lobby she and my boys they worry about this so bad Mark they are so concerned you know anything that happens to me whether I scrape my finger I get a bump on my face my oldest is like. You know, do you think that's cancer? Do you think it's cancer? So for me, I, even when I'm scared, I try to be strong, a strong face, just because I don't want them to worry. So if I look happy all the time, even when I'm not, when it comes to this stuff, they'll be okay. You, you, I mean, you're such a strong, healthy looking, beautiful woman. Yeah, thank you. Thank your, you. And your family seems so great. You, thank you. You, you. you came from a good family? I would say yes, um, single parent household. My father wasn't around. He actually lives in Plainfield, Illinois. Right, right with, on the street. Yep, yep, with his wife and and you know, yeah. So he wasn't he wasn't around. I can say that. And your husband, the father of your children, never been married. You never been never married. married. Nope. Never been married. But, um, you know, I have two fathers. My oldest has his father and my youngest has his father. And that's the whole thing. I know this is not, this is about cancer. But for me, you know, even with two different fathers, it happens. But father not being around, you know, a lot of things. It's just, a common thing. It, it, it absolutely it is. And it allowed me to choose bad partners or, you know, not saying that they're bad people, but just, you know, I didn't make good decisions when mm -hmm. it came to men. So... That's why I'm single now, That's fighting it. breast cancer. <laughs> by yourself. <laughs> yes, by myself, <laughs> with my family. I mean, this is such a thing. I think men don't really appreciate what struggles women have. Right. You know, because yeah. men, men just take it for granted that we're yeah. healthy and we're happy. Absolutely. And we don't have to worry about things Absolutely. like Absolutely, yep. But with yep. women, it's, you know, it can hit you young. Yep. It did you. I'm sorry? You get, it can hit women at a young age. Yes, yes. And which it did for me, you know. Yeah. Again, I'm 49 and this is my second second fight D with but it. But your appreciation for life and being healthy must be affected, right? Oh, oh, absolutely. Like, I try to remain. I'm so positive. I've always been a positive people. If you ask people in my life, whether it be coworkers or my family, like, I'm the positive person. I'm the person that people love. I'm the encourager. I'm the motivator. And I've always been that person even before cancer. So now it just makes me want to do those things that much more. Like I, I love life. I don't travel enough like I want to, but I, I love life. I do. Af African American, I'm changing the topic. Yeah. Here. Yeah. African American women. Yeah. I've noticed through my life growing up here in Chicago, mm -hmm. I worked with some older black women and I was always impressed with how strong they were. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's because they had to deal with so many had so many things against them. They Absolutely. Came, they, they came from poverty. They came from, yeah. they, were, they were African-American. They were right. female. Right. They were treated badly in so many different areas mm -hmm. of their lives. And yeah. It just made them stronger and more beautiful Most people. Most definitely. And my mom, she's from the South. So they come from, you know, just having nothing and being poor. So for me, just being raised with a, a single mom and also to me being a single mom, when I had my oldest, I knew like I need to do something. So, you know, maybe a year or so after I had him, I jumped into college. I didn't know what I was doing, but I, I jumped into college and I just knew I needed to make a better life for for my child. You know, at that time, I only had one. So I've just been, you know, on the hustle and on the grind ever since then. How has your personality um, helped you or, or just 
affected your way of dealing with with everything you've been through? You know, I can tell you have to go into things like this with just the bright attitude and just knowing or at least thinking that you're going to survive. Because you're you're if a positive you, person? I, I am. And, and and it's not fake. That's the thing. This is a genuine thing for me. Like I have my days and where I am down or, you know, I'm worried about what's going to happen with me because of my sons. I want to be here for them, but I just, I have to keep moving. So, you know, even the people at the clinic, when I come in, it's like everybody's smiling, like, oh, she's here, you know, and I, and I appreciate that. And I, and I feel that. And like I said, I'm not walking in and it's not fake. I just know I have to be a beacon of light to see, you know, an end coming. You know, I know there's going to be an end to this. I don't know what that means, but I know this is only temporary for me. So. Yeah, it's been interesting for me. One of the things I've learned from doing this project is mm -hmm. interviewing people who have been through some of the most horrible things yeah. ever. And I ask them, like, you know, do you wish, what would you change about your life? Mm -hmm. Like, would you, would you, would you have wished this never happened to you? Right. Almost every single person says, no, I, I would, I would oh, man. take what happened to me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I you learn so much and become, oh, you become oh. a, a more aware, deeper person. Absolutely. And that's how I am, too. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy because it is a lot. Like, even when it comes to, like, financial, like, I don't want for anything, Mark. Like, even though I'm a single person, I work and I'm so thankful that I, I still work and I have a flexible job. I've been there for over 21 years. So, you know, I have health insurance. So I feel bad about people who don't have health insurance, but I'm just thankful. You know, cancer is expensive, like chemotherapy, all of that. So sure, I'll still have like, you know, money to pay afterwards, but it's nothing compared to the, the grand scheme of things. Like I'm still alive. I'm still here. So... You know, again, no, there's nothing. I wouldn't change this. I wouldn't say I wish, I, I don't want cancer. I mean, I don't want cancer, but I, I'm doing it. And I feel as though it's picked the right person to to fight because I keep doing it and I do it with grace. That That's the thing, I do it with grace. You know, I get up every morning, I work from home, so I don't, you know, get dolled up or anything. And it's not that I do that often, but I, like, I'm still okay. Like, I'm still okay. You know, even when I lose my hair or when I was bald headed, like I didn't care. I would walk out. I would go to the store with the bald head. Yeah, I'm sure I, you're still beautiful. You know, I didn't, I didn't care about that. Thank you, Mark. But I didn't care. Like I, I'm living life. I'm living life and I'm still here. So it's beautiful. Do you have any regrets in your life? Um, Maybe just relationships and just partners and people <laughs> that I, I would say that's about it. Um, absolutely. <laughs> right. But that's pretty much it. Just my choice and relationships. Where, where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in Milwaukee, Milwaukee. Wisconsin. Yes. Yeah. Did you ever think about leaving? Oh, absolutely. I think about it all the time. <laughs> you, still do. I, you know, all the time. My oldest lives in Georgia now, mm. so he has been trying to get me to move out there, Mark. And I was really considering it last year. It's warmer. Yep, and last year. But again, I was considering it prior to the cancer. So that pretty much just threw and just kind of changed the game for everything. Life throws us these. Absolutely. These twists and turns. Yeah. And even now, like even the surgery that I just had a week ago, the reason I had it is because I had fluid buildup on this right breast and it was sore. So I had to get, you know, surgery to get that fluid out. It was bloody fluid. So they're trying to figure out what that is. I'm waiting on pathology now just to make sure it isn't another recurrence. So that would be number three. But hmm. I'm not going to speak that. I'll just, you know, say, you know, we'll just wait it out. But I, you're, every day you wake up, your appreciation for what you have. Oh, absolutely. Day day by day. Absolutely. Seems, it must be affected. Right? Oh, it is. Oh, it is. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm happy to be alive. I'm happy to be alive. Even if I don't have much of a, a social or a romantic life, like I just realized life is just not about that. I'm just happy to wake up, you know, with breath in my lungs, you know, just I'm able to breathe. I'm able to see. I'm just I'm just thankful that I'm still alive. That's wonderful. Kim, what would you, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your uh, The most important life? lesson. Oh, my God. There's so many. I've learned you can so give, many. You can share more than one. Oh, man. Um, you know, a one smart thing, person has more than one. You know, one thing I can say that I can always think of is just to be kind, for people to be kind. I notice there's a not a, there's not a lot of nice people in this world. Like you can walk past people and people they look down. I don't know if it's different in the South, um, but just be kind, be appreciative, be grateful for what you have, and just don't take life 
for granted because you can you can wake up like me. You know, I'm a pretty healthy girl. I've always tried to eat right. I I exercise, but just don't take life for granted because you can be you know fighting cancer too and not looking like cancer because I don't think I do. No, you don't. <laughs> you, you look like a good picture of health. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much for sharing. Oh, you're story. welcome. Thank you for having me, Mark. Good luck from here. Now. Thank you. Thank you.